Okay, so um, this is our workshop update video. We've not done one for a while, although we've been recording bits. Um, we've been um, expletive busy, which means recording stuff is sometimes a bit more troublesome, actually, because we, we want to get the work done and, um, and back out to the customer. Um, and uh, yeah, so time management's a bit of an issue when it comes to filming. And uh, also, we've put a lot of time and effort into our carburetor install video. Uh, which is already uploaded and we've got a ignition upload uh, ignition upload ignition installation video which we are going to upload we were missing an intro and some links in this video so we've done our best and we we have it's, it's a bit little choppy, bit choppy. Yeah. yeah a bit choppy um, so uh, for now here we go and uh, let's have some boost This Defender 90 then, uh, the customer assures me that the doors will be the same colour at some point. Um, it's uh, been going through a bit of a, a rebuild. He had the uh, 4.6s in here, built up with a carburetor and a V-belt front end, and then had uh, a firm install the hot wire injection system and the SERP front end, and that's when things started going a bit pear-shaped for him. Um, I think you've got photos of what we've done so far on this, haven't we? Haven't you? Probably. Probably. I'm sure, certain you have. You're always walking around with a camera. Um, so phase one for us was just getting this to a point where we knew it would at least run reliably. Um, it went initially when the customer brought it in, when you first started it, it revved to 3000 RPM and wouldn't settle for a very long time. Uh, we found that somebody, and you might be able to overlay the pictures here, Steve, if you have got them, uh, somebody had used a crowbar to separate the trumpet base from the intake manifold at some point and had burred all the edges up, um, which was of course causing big air leaks. So we just wanted to make sure that um, we could get this to a point where we could drive up the road and the engine wasn't knocking and, and causing any ill effects there, which meant we shouldn't continue with this engine. Um, so we're happy that we're at a point now where we can apply our ignition upgrades, ECU chip, um, and get the engine running really, really sweet. However, the customer has um, brought it into us as well for some fine detailing. So this engine's actually coming out. We're going to be go, going through it all, uh, applying all new gaskets because um, the last people he had work on it, he, he's not entirely certain uh, they're familiar with um, the process of doing gaskets on Rover V8 engines and doing them so they stand an awesome mm -hmm. chance of not leaking oil rather than they will leak oil. Um, and uh, so that's coming out to have that done. While that's happening, we're going to be painting all the ancillaries and covers on the engine and also giving the engine bay a bit of a spruce up as well. So. I'm about to disappear for a couple of days. Although in video time, not at all. Yeah, and in reality, not at all, because I'll be in tomorrow morning doing something here. Because you're never not here. <laughs> um, and um, you might come out and do some photos or videos when I'm not here. Probably, maybe. And then um, when I'm back, we'll see where we're at and uh, fill in the blanks on the video. Right, we'll go there then. Hopefully it'll all make sense. Hopefully. Yeah. It normally does, sort of. Yeah. We've also... Um, made up some brackets for this bonnet stay because um, it didn't have one and yeah although no, the bonnet does. yeah the, although the bonnet will be off for working on it we like to know when we're road testing a car or doing settings on the road we, we're not stood here holding the bonnet doing this so um, we, we did some fabrication broom handle wasn't exactly elegant uh, no no as telescopic as it could be it wasn't right on to the next bit rambling yes Okay, so the uh, engine is now out, as proven by the big gaping hole in the engine bay. Um, we're going to do some tidy up work in here and some uh, paint, um, just neaten things up a bit. Uh, however, also, uh, I think the customer is now discussing with me about converting possibly to an automatic, just to make it a bit more of a friendly sort of daily driver um, in towns and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to quote up for that. This project might now sort of go on to the extended projects list because of further work that we're, we're now detailing. So um, I've forgotten what I'm meant to be linking to next. Uh, this engine on the test bed. Ah, well done. The engine on the test bed then. Uh, this was in the previous workshop update video in the engine bay over there. 
Um, so it's all now up and running, ready to ship off to the customer. We've been through and done all of our um, confirmation of settings and sensors, etc. Um, so reminder of the spec, it's a 4.6 stage 3 heads ported intake and trumpet base on GEMS injection system uh, with a Piper cam to match the, the setup and uh, power profile we're looking for with the customer. So let's fire it up. <laughs> So, lovely tick over, nothing lumpy or anything. Obviously, it throttles up nicely. We wouldn't be sending it out if it didn't. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's within specification in terms of the sensors and everything. We've set the fuel pressure regulator up so the customer won't even need to do that bit. And um, confirmed that uh, it's all tickety-boo, ready to go. So, uh, yeah. Quite Is a quick a section of the video, really. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you want to film the, you know, draining of all the fluids and putting it on a pallet and wrapping it and bubble wrapping it and wrapping it again and strapping it and. Uh, I'd get bored. Oh, okay. Oh, and um, yes, the engine was warm. Engine bay room then. So um, these two engines actually we've seen before, so we'll just briefly touch on them. Uh, this is a 4-litre stage 3 engine for an MG BGT, and this is a 4-litre standard engine um, for a P5 we've got in the workshop that's also having a 4-speed auto conversion. So if you've not seen these, the, our previous videos, we've actually covered them previously, um, so we won't go too into detail on those. This engine here is a 4.6 though, destined for a Discovery 1. The vehicles are now imminent into our workshop. It's got stage 3 cylinder heads and a Piper 270 camshaft, so being built for torque and mid-range power. The vehicle's actually coming into us next week. Hopefully the customer's going to clean it because he's using it at Billing Lander of a show in the off-road course this weekend. So um, after he's cleaned it and brought the car in, we can pull the original engine out we will then thoroughly clean the covers and ancillaries from the engine, dress this up complete, and complete the transplant by bolting it back in and setting it up. So hopefully we'll get some shots of that in the next workshop update. It won't be in this one. This engine is a 3.5 litre. It is destined for a series Land Rover. Uh, we've just done the modification to the back of the crankshaft because it's being mated to the original uh, series gearbox. Um, being built up as a standard engine, standard cylinder heads and our Piper Torque Max camshaft, which for us is what we use as a standard cam. It obviously promotes a little bit more bottom end torque than the standard cam does, but um, the customer's refitting his twin carburetors and his ignition system to it. So we'll just be building this up and dressing it with the covers that he's supplied to us, like the timing cover, some rocker cover, after we've cleaned them up. Um, these two engines here, are both 4.6, both Merlin cylinder heads, but we're not going to discuss them right now because we need to use the engine room again for another link section slash filler in a little while. So right now we're going to look at a white Land Rover 90 that I can't really remember right now what we did on it, um, but here it is. Okay, so we're going to go out in uh, the D90 for a road test. Uh, this is the white one that was featured in our last video. We showed you under the bonnet, but never got round to road testing it. The wrong Steve is behind the camera, and I mean that with the best intent, mate. <laughs> Morning. Um, so, uh, yeah, Office Steve isn't, isn't here today, but we've got Workshop Steve behind the camera, which is quite nice because you did all the work on it. I did. Um, so, um, on LPG, we're going to fire up on LPG because everyone says you can't, um, and uh, head off down the road and uh, give you a little demo of what it sounds like and uh, what it drives like. Right then, so, uh, yeah, out on the road. Uh, on LPG, everything's driving really, really nicely. Uh, we did have a, a, a little bit of a change on the snorkel on this, which we'll show you when we get back to the workshop. Um, found that we were having zero vacuum in the induction system, didn't we, Steve? We did. Which caused, uh, when you were off the throttle, at, um, sort of coming down to a junction, um, without that vacuum in the induction system, there's nothing to draw the LPG through, and obviously the engine was cutting out. So uh, we changed the snorkel top to, uh, to correct that. That is an issue with draw through LPG and snorkels that needs consideration. Um, but the engine's driving really, really nicely. It's only a 3.5 in here, but um, it responds exactly to what I'm asking it to do from the throttle pedal. Doing everything a V8 should do in a Defender. Okay, so we're going to do um, first through to fifth here with no accelerator pedal. This is a carburetted engine, 3.5 in a 90. Um, 
and uh, lots of people say LPG doesn't work well. Well, this is on LPG. So there's first, no accelerator at all. My right foot is up near my left knee. That's second, third, fourth. Transmission and drive line is, uh, that'll be that exhaust that, um, yeah. The back end of the exhaust on this isn't great and the customer's uh, got that on his uh, home DIY list. So we'll go for fifth. That's fifth at about, well, 10, anything from 10 to 15 mile an hour, depending on where the needle bounces. But we'll, uh, we'll now start leaning on the accelerator pedal. We're going up a slight gradient here. Obviously with a larger capacity engine, we'd be already sort of pulling a bit more. And if we'd finished the exhaust system off, uh, rather than the customer deciding who's going to when he got at home, um, the exhaust wouldn't be rattling, but there we go. Fifth gear from probably 12, 13 miles an hour, up a slight incline, and we're rolling. No backfires at all due to the power plenum on the carburetor and our ignition upgrades. I reckon you set this one up well, Steve. Oh, thank you very much. Pretty much like every other one you set up. <laughs> Can I just mention, Yeah. you do know the hairdressers are now open. You keep saying this, I'm not sure why. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll just change over to petrol. Um, so on a carburet system, the LPG switch has got three positions. Um, so at the moment, we're on LPG, the orange light is solid. I'll press the button again and we'll get the petrol light come on again, which is red and solid. This now means the petrol pump's running, the engine's already dual fueling, and now we're on petrol. Nice, easy changeover. So obviously the engine does exactly what it should do on petrol, as it does on LPG, the dual timing amplifier when we're on petrol. Above about 1500 RPM, it's just pulling the ignition timing back by about eight degrees, just so we've got the right timing for both fuels. The extra advance that it's getting on petrol under 1500 RPM um, it doesn't matter at all and in fact is what a programmable ignition system, one that runs core packs like GEMS or Thor, would often do. They often actually start with more advance than you'd normally run on a dizzy and then they start pulling it back uh, under the low RPM, high load area. Um, so yeah, no issues at all there. Changing back, we're on petrol. Push the button to go to the middle position, which is no fuel. So we're now running the float bowls out. The petrol pump is off, the LPG solenoids are off, and we're just using the fuel that's in the float bowls. Once that starts to uh, deplete, the engine will start to struggle, and we'll then hit the button and change over to LPG. That may or may not happen before this junction. It's not so, going to, is it? It's not going to, but it's fine, because all we can do is we can pull up here, Get ready on the button. We're still using the float reserves. There's quite a lot in these. There is. There we go, we just stumbled a bit, so we'll go on to gas. And we're away on LPG. Right, we'll head back to the workshop and uh, just show you the snorkel revision. So under the bonnet, just to recap, because we showed it in the previous workshop update video, customer already had the plenum, the ignition upgrades, the carburetor, etc. Um, uh, we've just done the inline air filter setup here, or I say we, Steve has. Um, and um, the, yeah, because the original setup had lots of holes in the air pipe and no filter in line. So uh, Steve sorted that out. And then moving up to the snorkel. So originally, there was uh, this forward facing, I think, did you say rearward facing? Rearward facing. Rearward facing snorkel, which normally wouldn't be a problem. We, we've done them before. Um, when they're forward facing, you end up with this ram air effect and that causes no vacuum to be in the induction system and, and therefore the gas system can't function properly. Um, however, this one, um, it just wasn't working for us either way round. Uh, I think the only way we didn't try pointing it was that way. But um, we uh, had this other snorkel top and this doesn't give any turbulent air or anything in the intake system. And as soon as we rigged this up, the gas system worked lovely, um, no problems whatsoever. So that is just one consideration when running a snorkel and draw, draw through LPG. Can still be done, still works great. You just need to make sure that you're getting nice uh, feed of air into the intake that's not being rammed in. 
Yeah, so that finishes this off. Um, I think we've got another engine to run on the test bed now. Right then, another engine on the test bed. Um, so this is a four litre bottom end Holly's built up. We actually sent the carburetor kit, the stage three cylinder heads, the Piper 270 camshaft, the ignition kit, all off to the customer for installation to his uh, 3.5 and a Defender 110. And he, um, I don't really know the reason, got bored, or I think the real reason was he um, opened the 3.5 up and it wasn't quite what he was expecting in terms of condition. Therefore, um, sent it to us and said, turn it into a four litre. So uh, we did. Everything's working lovely. So um, obviously the advantage of doing this for the customer running it up on hair means that uh, uh, we can break the cam in, we can make sure we're happy with everything, we can set the ignition timing, base settings for him, we can do all the base settings of the carburetor. It's pre-jetted because we'd already sent it to him to fit to his 3.5, we've changed the needle and jets for the 4 litre. Um, so he can quite literally drop this in and, uh, and drive it. He might just need to slightly fine tune the accelerator pump, maybe a little bit of tweak on the ignition timing. We'll pull it off the engine test pad and uh, reprime the oil pump, so you won't have any issues there either. Back in here again then, um, Merlin engines. So this is being built up, or pretty much is built up, for a, a Defender over in the States. It's currently a 3.9, obviously running hot wire injection system. Um, just waiting for the upgraded Bosch injectors to come in for this, um, and then change the fuel pressure regulator out. It's then ready to go out to the customer. It's also having a 4.6 Bosch airflow meter upgrade along with the Tornado ECU chip. Um, the spec on it is Piper 285 camshaft with the Merlin cylinder heads. Um, so it's, it's going to really give some decent power from the mid to upper rev range. Um, I think the customer's planning on putting it on the dyno, so it'll be really good to see what figures it pulls. It's got ported intake manifold, ported trumpet base with the um, Alley trumpet, and a larger 71mm throttle uh, disc um, enlarged on the plenum as well. So that's a really nice setup. This one is actually being built up for our old demo vehicle here. Uh, we call it OFX because of the plate on it. Um, so it's Chris's old Range Rover. It's been through many phases of engines. However, at the moment, it's got nothing in it. So we decided to build up a Merlin engine and uh, actually have a play around with camshafts and a few other things as well. So 4.6 bottom end. Uh, we've actually raised the compression ratio up a bit by going uh, 4 litre pistons. With the CC of the heads and the gaskets we're using, we're at about 10.4 to 1 compression ratio. So we're on the limit of where we really want to be, but we wanted to be on that limit. Um, we know raising compression ratio works really, really well. We saw that on our P38 that we dynoed. It's on standard heads on a, our Torquemax camshaft, uh, making 250 horsepower on effectively a standard engine just with raised compression and a remap. Uh, again, ported intake manifold, but this is going with the triple throttle body carbon fibre intake plenum that we've got here. Um, and uh, we've actually had this engine on build a very long time, but we just haven't found time to get into it. Uh, however, we need to, so here we are. It's being built, hopefully, what is it now, coming up to July? Maybe. I'll yeah. say it'll I be in, I and, have no idea. in and running by the end of the year. As a ballpark. Maybe, as a ballpark. But yeah, we, we will get round to it, but it's often more difficult getting our stuff done because we're so focused on getting customers' cars processed and, and engines built, etc. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the two Merlin engines that are on build at the moment. Um, the next bit we're going to see is a Cobra. And I can't remember too. I know we did loads of filming on that, which I think I explained in a second. Right, okay, so under the bonnet, um, you and me slipped on this one, didn't we? A little bit. Yeah, we didn't actually film anything before or during. So it's been incredibly busy here. Um, and uh, we uh, often get tied up in doing the work and answering phone calls and emails. So um, there you go. However, it was on our Holly 390 with an Offenhauser 360 intake on a stock ignition system. Um, we uh, pulled them all off, knowing that we were doing ignition upgrades, Edelbrock carburetor, and changing to the Offy dual port intake. We've actually used this vehicle for um, uh, in purposes of filming of the Edelbrock install um, and also the ignition install. So actually we have done a lot of filming on this car. We just completely forgot to do the workshop update bit, but never mind. 
Um, camshaft, really good in the engine. We've actually changed cylinder heads over on it. Uh, the cylinder heads had quite a lot of carbon build up on the um, intake ports. Um, so discussed it with the customer and a decision was made to actually switch out for some uh, later date 10 bolt heads. Um, so we had some here available. So they've been bolted on and then the um, upgrades that we were always, always uh, going to do have been put on. So um, beforehand it was a bit of a bugger to start um, and didn't particularly drive very nicely. Um, again, should have filmed that, but never mind. Um, however, now as you're about to see, uh, we're now about to go up the road and its uh, throttle response is great. Um, and um, I mean starting it is it is easy so um, no concerns there whatsoever a really reliable motor we've got now um, and uh, yeah I'm sure the customer will be really happy with it here's us out in the road on it right out in the Cobra then Really nice to drive. Be a little bit warmer if we had the door tops on, though, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, I thought you said you were bringing gloves. I did. They're in my pocket. <laughs> not going to do a lot of good there, <laughs> are they? They warm my leg uh, up. Warm your... <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, back to the subject. So, um, it's only a 3.5 litre engine in here. It's never going to uh, perform like a 4.6, like some of the Cobras we get in. But, that being said, it drives incredibly nicely. Yesterday on slightly damp roads, it definitely needed an LSD if you were putting your foot down in second. It would um, grip and then as it came through probably about 3,000 RPM, it would start spinning one rear. So there's definitely some torque there from it. Um, and uh, throttle response as well, which is obviously exactly what we were looking for when converting from that Holly carburetor to the Edelbrock and getting that dual port intake manifold on. Ignition system, hitting it with a nice decent spark, obviously uh, adds to all of that as well. Nice fast combustion process. So you can just trundle along here. I mean, I'll stick it in fifth, which of course we always do in all our videos, but that's fifth at 25. I'm just trundling along, enjoying the sunshine. Right, well, um, that was the end to the Cobra video that we didn't record the end to. Well, we did record the end to, but it ended up as carburetor install videos which you can see on our Facebook and YouTube channels both called RPI engineering <laughs> nice <weirdly plug>. enough. <laughs> um, so what am I doing stood in front of a few Range Rovers um, and a Discovery 2 not forgotten on the end so we quite often get asked uh, do you sell 4 before 4s and things and um, we do but often they've got are fully remanufactured engines in them or about to have or available for so we've decided um, these vehicles although bought in or well, most of these were bought in for core material um, they're too good to do that to at the moment um, you know they're just just a bit too nice to to pull down for parts so they're available for our our program of work be it just a, a, a fresh engine maybe an LPG conversion. Some of these have already got LPG on them, actually. Um, auto gearbox refurb, full axles, a lot of work that we do to customers' vehicles. Uh, we've had customers bring P38s before, P38s in before, and they've wanted the full works because they've owned the car for 15, 20 years, and they want another 20 years from it. So uh, these are all uh, for that. With the Discovery 2 on the end, actually, has already got one of our 4.6 engines in with the 4.6 remap. Um, it's an auto, isn't it? I forget. Yes, it is, or it was when I drove it anyway. <laughs> okay, um, so that's that's ready. We're now going to advertise that. Um, and actually the P38 on the end is the um, one that we did a little bit of dyno work on. Actually, it's got high compression 4.6 engine in, uh, again with the remap and LPG. So, so they're ones that are more ready to kind of go. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in having us prep a vehicle for you, obviously you can either source your own or we do have some candidates available. Um, so that's what, what these are all about. Um, there's a 101 as well. <laughs> <laughs>